Dr. Richard Saul, good morning. How are you, my man? Good morning. Nice to talk with you. Um, now, obviously, you, you, you don't mince words here. The title of the book, ADHD, does not exist. You know that a lot of people who have kids that have been diagnosed with this are going to be greatly offended by that. It seems so, uh, even though they haven't read the book and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but, Rover, uh, the whole point is that it doesn't exist as a disease. Mm -hmm. It exists with its symptoms, and the whole book is about the 20 or so chapters of different conditions that mimic the attention deficit symptoms, impulsive, distractible, short attention span, that type of thing. So there's 20 different conditions that I've mentioned. There's probably more, and they exist with their symptoms, not the ADHD. So and the reason this came... About at this go. point is over the last year, we've put out maybe another million people on uh, stimulants. And that's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, in my practice, maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, there must be 20 people who take stimulants. The rest of them take whatever is appropriate for their particular condition. What about, would you say that uh, most doctors, you say 20 uh, in your practice, I don't know how many patients you have total. So, uh, you know, percentage-wise, how many of your of your patients are taking stimulants as opposed to, uh, you know, the normal uh, practice, would you say? Well, I'd say about 5%. So 5% of your patients. And what do you think is the norm for, uh, for kids these days if they go to the doctor how many of these uh, p doctors are are over prescribing this and maybe well, putting 80 percent of the kids I, I had on a patient it. in yesterday i can tell you about it. he he came in and he said he why is he taking this other medicine because he brings this great big book called abnormal psychology and he opens it up to a page it says adhd the treatment is ritalin why aren't i taking ritalin <laughs> so i explained to him why but um uh, that's the kind of attitude that's going on. Uh, doctors in general, uh, ADHD equals stimulants. So whether it's Ritalin or Adderall or some other kind of stimulant, that's the way they believe. And then if one stimulant doesn't work, try a different stimulant. Try another. And that's what many of my patients come in with. They can't eat. They can't sleep. They're taking stimulants. And they're not getting better. It, it, doesn't it seem like uh, if you can't eat and you can't sleep, isn't that a, in itself a symptom of taking all this uh, essentially legal speed? Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> how long have you been doing this, Dr. Saul? I, I mean, how long have you been uh, uh, practicing medicine? I've been practicing for 50 years. All right. And so you've, you've specialized in this for how long, would you say? That, that entire time or almost? Well, I, I, since 1983, I've specialized in behavioral neurology. Okay. And um, the runs the gamut for ADHD is one of the things, but it could be anything that creates medical reasons for behavioral issues. Well, when, when I, uh, you know, you must have been alarmed as this. I'm just a stupid radio guy. I'm not a, a neurologist like you, but uh, you must have been alarmed as I, I was alarmed as, you know, I'm, I'm 38 years old and I think I was maybe the last generation of kids who was not widely prescribed all of this medication. And as is, is now what I see happening is, is you, this, it's just an alarming rate uh, of prescribing this Adderall, prescribing this stuff. And I think the latest numbers are one in nine kids has this ADHD now. Uh, that, what is that, ADHD? It, 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 it just, it's impossible. I mean, it, how would we have ever advanced as a society if we had so many of us with this, uh, with this, uh, you know, this disease? But well, you know, Rover, I, I started the book with a, a, a few chapters on the history and go back into uh, uh, describing children in the 1880s who had uh, would sit in a dunce chair or uh, would. They would write rhymes about them that they couldn't pay attention, and they were just their mind was off somewhere. So there are such people, uh, but they are not in the numbers that we see. It's just uh, when I uh, when I first started in practice, this was a rare condition. They were even changing names at that point. They thought it was brain damage. Then it was minimal brain damage. 
then it was uh, it finally evolved into attention deficit because most of them do have a problem with attention. But at this point, people take it to take tests if they can convince the doctor per, to prescribe it or borrow it from a friend, uh, and they claim it makes their testing easier. Uh, in some people, that's true. In some people, they go so nuts when they take it that they can't even finish the test. Uh, well, so you say that, that there are symptoms of ADHD that are real. So it's not like we're telling parents, hey, you know, you're, this is all in your head. There are symptoms. But you're saying it's not a disease. It's not just the ADHD is not causing these uh, symptoms. There's something else that causes these, and there are you, – you point to 20 different things. Give, give me a couple of examples of things that can cause those symptoms that you can treat in other ways. Well, we start off with the most common, and that is trouble with vision or hearing. And sometimes if people can't read the board or they can't hear the teacher, they're distracted, they do other things, they fidget around, et cetera. We go on to well. That just well. Let me stop you there for a second because that just seems painfully obvious, Doctor Saul. That <laughs> if 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 you, if you have bad eyesight and you can't see the blackboard twenty feet away from you, or you have bad hearing, you can't hear. You're not going to be engaged. You're not going to pay attention. You're going to be looking around at the floor. You're going to be looking up at the ceiling. You're going to be doodling. Uh, that, Rover, that seems obvious. People have been this way, maybe since birth, and so to them, they don't notice anything different uh -huh. and so they don't complain but we go on to a lot of medical things sleep disorders uh, for instance or substance abuse or um, bipolar disorder Tourette syndrome Asperger's uh, people who are uh, gifted and get bored because they just are not being challenged seizure disorders is an insidious thing where they have what's called absence seizures, and the seizure may last a second, but it just disturbs their train of thought so they can't focus and so forth. So, so there's a lot, a lot of things. In each chapter, we tell a little case history and also uh, a section on what to watch out for that would make it that particular diagnosis. In the final chapter, we tell about how you do workups, how you do evaluations for each of these conditions. Would you say um, uh, these stimulants, this Adderall, the Ritalin, that kind of stuff, yeah. um, how many people that are getting it, or how many kids that are getting it uh, actually need it, would you say? <laughs> um, I, you know, that's a hard question. I, I can tell you 11% of the, of the children and 4% of the adults are diagnosed with this, and most of them are taking stimulants. And, and if, if, if ADHD as a disease doesn't exist and these other things causing it, how, are there individual treatments for all these other things? Yes. That, okay. each, each has its own treatment. So, and there is a small percentage that have neurochemical or brain chemical abnormalities that do respond to stimulants, but it's a small percentage. So, uh, so now, inevi inevitably, you're going to get people who say, well, I'm one of those people. I, well, what's I, that that's based me. on? It's He's me. saying a small percentage. What are you basing that on? He's you basing that on his own drill. research, Dumb. Dumb as a, my phone screener has a child who's been diagnosed with ADHD. Uh -huh. uh, how long ago, Dumb? Uh, gosh, I don't know, six years now? And what was, what was she doing that was... Uh, uh, that, that led them down that path of ADHD. She could not focus in school. She can't sit still and listen and, or anything. I mean, she sees a pencil on her desk, she'll sit and play with the pencil for, for the whole class instead of talking, paying attention to what's going on. She'll just roll the pencil. And what's she on now? They have her on these drugs? Yeah, she's been through a few different ones. She's on Focalin now. Um... But it, that's the thing. Like, we did all that. We did her. We tested her ears going into it. We tested her IQ to see if it was way too high, like if we, she needed to be in advanced classes. So it wasn't like it's the parents that just go, my kid's out of control, and then just show up at the doctor's office and say, put them on this. That's the problem. Like you, ha there, like you said, there are steps to build up to it. That would yeah. be last 
diagnosis I wanted. I wanted to find rule everything else out before I accepted that because I, I kind of like him. I just I think it's overdiagnosed. But do you think that there's probably something with her, Doctor Saul, that is uh, uh, causing that sort of behavior? Well, if, something if else. She needs medicine. She needs medicine. But the other the other point is I hate the idea of try this, try that. You know, oh, she can't pay attention. Here, try this. Oh, that doesn't work. Try that. Oh, she can't sleep. All right, well, let's try this. No, there's tests for all these things. There's tests to see if they need a stimulant. Uh, we run uh, uh, laboratory studies through Mayo Clinic uh, and also through a clinic called Nichols that are very uh, refined clinics, and we can trust their data uh, that show whether their neurotransmitters, the things that are carrying messages through the brain, are the way they should be. Mm -hmm. If they don't have enough of those chemicals, then a stimulant stimulates the release of more of those chemicals. What do you think is going to happen to this generation of children who's <laughs> being raised on these stimulants, this Adderall, Ritalin, all of this Focalin, whatever the hell that is? It's um, another stimulant. Um, Look, I don't see a lot of people pointing to long term. I mean, I don't know. What do you take this stuff forever? I mean, what do you become 50 years old? You're still taking this? I don't know what what ends up happening to these kids. But what's your long term prognosis for this generation? Well, in my practice, they don't stay on medicine more than five years. If we get the right medicine and we treat them correctly and they stay on it every every day, uh, they can be off in five years. Uh, a lot of the physicians are prescribing this because they're worried about it. They prescribe it on school days and not on weekends and not on holidays and not in the summer. And what that guarantees is that you take it for more and more and more years. So that's well, aren't these issue. Aren't these drugs treatments and not cures? So why would you need to get off of them if they're treating it well, and not curing it? If you're in diabetes and you're treating something, not curing it, same yeah. idea. It's not the, the same as diabetes, but what we can do is... Well, it's a chemical imbalance in your brain, is it not? Well, I don't know what it is. train their brain once you get the correct medication. You can train the chemicals in your brain to, to refire? Their brain itself, how they function, how they see themselves uh, excelling when they're focused and paying attention, and they're willing to bring up the feelings that they get from the medicine on their own after they've been on it for a few years. That's why we keep it for a few years. Um, how long has your daughter done been on this? Six years. Six years. How, and how old? old is she now? Uh, twelve. She's twelve years old. Doctor Saul, what yeah. would you say before I let I you go? I would say that there's something else going on. Oh, All right, like Dom, we're going to have to either that or she's not taking it on weekends and holidays in summer. Um, would you? Uh, this book comes out. Uh, ADHD does not exist. The truth about attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. It will be released on Tuesday. February 18th. Do you think that your last question before I let you go, Dr. Saul, do you think that you will eventually be vindicated? Right now you're going against the grain. Or maybe you're not. Maybe maybe most people like you who are researchers or know a lot about this, maybe you all know this. And it's just us in the general public that doesn't. Um, I don't know how whacked out your theories, your theories are to the general medical community, but do you think that you'll eventually be vindicated in time? Yeah, I don't think I need to be vindicated. It's just a matter of uh, whether people believe what I'm telling them. And the way they're going to believe that is that I've given the evidence. I've shown all the various conditions that could mimic this. And also for the physicians, there's a whole section of references scientific references but the book is is for parents and teachers and uh, I think I think people will slowly understand that but it is a paradigm change and as such it's going to take time for people but what I'm hoping is that when they go to the doctor they're going to start asking questions well what else could it be what else could we use what's going on yeah because this stuff this 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 Adderall and that kind of stuff uh, these will have, I'm assuming, long-term health consequences. If you're, if you start taking this at age six and you're taking this for ten years, fifteen years, a lot of people are doing it. I have a guy on the phone who's 23 years old. He's been taking it for ten years. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, that, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming heart problems or something, right? Well, you know, uh, we monitor with blood tests every three months, 
and even for years so that we know that they're not getting overstimulated if they're on stimulants, mm-hmm. uh, which I say is a small percentage of the practice. But if you get overstimulated, then your body can adjust to that and you become addicted. And and so that's one of the things we want to avoid. Yeah, and I don't think that a lot of doctors, I've, I've never heard of someone having their blood uh, tested every three months who has ADHD. Yeah, that's they probably argue yeah. with that, but they don't argue with testing the blood. Hmm. Uh, the question is how often, but... But I feel, you know, uncomfortable giving any medicine to anybody without good, careful follow-up. Well, it, it seems that he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and, uh, again, he's a neurologist. I'm a stupid radio guy. But this all, this all makes sense to me. I've been saying this a long time. Uh, Dr. Saul, good luck with the book. Well, good thanks. luck in educating people. I know it's going to be tough because we as Americans... We just want to take a pill and be done with it. You know, all these cholesterol medications I see advertised on TV, they always say, when diet and exercise don't work, take this pill. Now, I know, just as well as you do, 99.9% of those people aren't really changing their diet and exercise habits. They go, let's take a pill. That's a hell of a lot easier. Um, So good luck. I think it's an uphill battle, but I appreciate coming on, uh, Dr. So. Follow it along. We'll see what happens. And really appreciate talking with you, Rover. Thank you very much. Dr. Richard Saul. The book comes out Tuesday, February 18th. It's called ADHD Does Not Exist.